There's not really a lot of alternative, alternate versions didn't make the final cut. I think we've mentioned on a previous <laughs> interview that the rationale for these reissues is to have all the tracks that Chris and I worked on or wrote around the same time as a, as a, as a main album that we think are worth releasing, or, 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 as it says, of master quality, which means that it's actually sort of like some kind of finished record. I mean, the problem, the problem about uh, no nowadays is that on YouTube there are tapes of demos that have been stolen and then put on YouTube, so people have heard songs. If they're not on the record, we haven't sort of forgotten to put them on. <laughs> they're just not really what we would regard as, as good enough. Well, we have a vast number of unfinished songs, actually going back to 1982. <laughs> People might know the names of them because in our magazine, which is called Literally, now it comes out once a year, it's called Annually, we tend to mention all the songs, song titles that we've worked on. But that doesn't mean that they're brilliant, finished, glistening uh, recordings of these songs. It means they're sort of often just half-baked demos with an idea of the chorus or, the, or maybe not finished. Sometimes we might use an old demo as the basis of a new song. For instance, we had a demo we were going to put on one of these reissues. Chris didn't like the fact he had a vocal on it and he didn't like it, but he liked the chorus idea. And that chorus idea turned into Burn on our last album, Super. So that was based on a demo which was at least 20 years old and that occasionally can happen. My favourite remix that we've done was for a group called Atomizer, and it was called Hooked on Radiation. And that was sort of the height of the electro clash scene, and um, it sounds quite authentic, and it's got lots of energy to it, that, that's mine. And then the favourite remix we've had done would definitely be So Hard by David Morales. My favourite mix by other people is still Young Offender by Jam and Spoon. It takes the song, keeps the integrity of the song, but it, it just sort of improves it in every possible way. And my favourite mix, which I like Hooked on Radiation a lot. It's a really good song, it was never a hit or anything, but it's a fantastic song. Maybe Walking on Thin Ice for Yoko Ono. Oh, actually, no, it's not. It's Human by The Killers. Sometimes, when we, we haven't done a remix for any of ages actually, but we used to put new vocals on it. And I kind of wanted to make it a duet with me and Brandon singing. We came up with some new bits. It works as a pop record and a rock record and also as a dance record. You can see with these reissues that in the ones from the 80s only have one bonus CD and that's because in those days the technology of writing was more complicated. We didn't have our own studio in the 80s um, so we used to go somewhere to write and the equipment was more complicated to work and much 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 slower and then in the early 90s Chris had a house in the countryside and we had a studio for the first time. And also Pete Gledel, our programmer, would work with us and so we got more prolific. And as time went on we got, we would spend more time in our own studios. And now we have one in London and one in Berlin. And I say studios, they're just little rooms. I don't know statistically what the answer to that question is, but I know when you look at the album release, you can see what a lot of different styles we wrote in. And none of these reissues actually touch on the projects we've done outside our albums, i.e. Parchip or Temkin or Close to Heaven, actually there's a couple of demos on, on one of them. If you look at Elysium, um, it's only got one bonus disc, and that's because a lot. what would have been the further listening for Elysium is the album Electric. We made a whole album out of other songs we'd written at the same time as Elysium. And at the same time, we were probably writing the Alan Turing piece, you know, or, or the most incredible thing, I can't remember the dates now. So it's a difficult question to answer, because I don't know statistically the answer, but maybe, I don't know, maybe release. I know this is probably being asked because people often think we put some of our best songs on the B-side. What we tend to do with B-sides is probably maybe put on the most recent song we've written. Like for instance, a B-side I've always liked by us is a song called Always, which is the B-side of 
of Home and Dry, and people and people have occasionally said, "Why wasn't that on the, on the relevant album release?" Well, actually, it wasn't made then. <laughs> we did it right at the end, and we'd sort of pretty much finished the album, and that's why we, when you do a B side, you want it to be sort of fresh. So really, the the main criterion is the most recent thing we've done. So so you know, when you release singles, there's something about it. It's the process isn't like it used to be, but. The, you wanted to kind of freshen it up, you know, if you're putting out a single that's already been on the album. We've always felt that the, that the single should come with other tracks, maybe new tracks, so it's, so it's something kind of fresh for, for the audience to, to hear. The, the, the point of a single nowadays um, is to bring out a song that you hope radio will play. I mean, that's actually, that's what a single is. If a single is not played on the radio, it may as well not exist, really. In fact, it doesn't exist if it's not played on the radio. That would be the main criterion. And of course, what you think is going to be played on the radio is probably the song that people think is really catchy or something, whatever the word would be nowadays. There's another thing, though, that you want to, the first single of an album, you want to sort of say, this is the direction they've gone in on this record. So it's give some maybe some, maybe some hint of not necessarily but maybe some hint of the album but like when yes came out love etc was the first single you know we wanted to put out a collaboration with xenomania and also it was an obviously catchy song and also it sounds a bit different so actually to come back to this question on that album we always thought the song all over the world should have been the second single the record company and our radio people thought it should be did you see me coming and they made that decision off late really and actually I still think we were right <laughs> but that's the only time I can ever really recall being even remotely bothered about it and nowadays it's more casual like for instance when we brought an electric we had a track that sort of was out there on this on the last album super inner sanctum was that a single was it just sort of out there it was a video to give an idea of what the album's going about to excite people it's not that you're expecting radio 2 to play it 25 times a week Oh, well, I don't revisit it, generally. I've not even listened to the reissues. I have to. Yes, you have. Uh, when? When we did the interview with Chris Heath for the booklet. We, listened well, we sat to down and listened to it all. We sat down over a two-day period and listened to them and then talked about them. No memory of that. <laughs> I probably think... It's quite a long time ago. I'm, I'm a very binary person. It's either I like it or I don't like it. But don't. we don't sit down and analyse how we could have done something better. The one I can remember we changed was Release, which was originally called Home. We mentioned it to a friend of ours, Wolfgang Tillmans, and he said, why are you calling it Home? He says, you should just call it something like, I don't know, Release. And we immediately liked that title. And that was, I think, the only time we ever changed. My recollection of actually is that, it could be wrong, is that we had the title actually while we were making the album like we did with Very as well. Both of those albums, my recollection, rightly or wrongly, is that we had the title for most of the album making process. Introspective, I remember we spent forever trying to come, we couldn't think of a title for it. And the reason we chose Introspective is because actually, not that the album is introspective, we thought it sounded kind of ravey, and it was when the rave scene was just starting in 1988. I'm not unhappy with any of our album titles then. Well, we had a moment in the 90s where Bilingual was going to be called Pet Shop Boys, that's the way life is, from the lyric from Sarah Vida I think we might even have done some sample artwork for it. And then we thought, no, it's the one word thing is quite a strong idea. And on pop art, we cheated by, hyphen I think, did we, did we hyphenate or push, pushed it together? So it was like one, it's really two words, pop art, but we presented it as one word.